Jesus Christ. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. By God's mercy and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, we've come through the whole of the Great Lent. And now, after the Great Fast, we come to the Holy Week that we've prepared for. It's also a time of a fasting period, but a, a fast of anticipation and joy that rises above even the Great Lent. <coughs> Today, we welcome our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Today, because our hearts can become Jerusalem. Today, we can welcome our Lord Jesus Christ into our heart anew. But yet, our Lord Jesus Christ will enter our heart at anywhere and at all times and in every place. But we're called upon, on this day especially, to recognize that our Lord Jesus Christ is entering not only into Jerusalem, but He's entering in to the time of His own great physical suffering. And how should we see and understand that suffering? Some people see that Jesus Christ is being tortured so that we can be forgiven. Brothers and sisters, this is not the truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ is entering Jerusalem today and entering into the period of His saving passion because of His complete unselfish love for mankind so that He can heal our fallen human nature and so that He can conquer the power of death for us and liberate us, redeem us from bondage to the fear that Satan uses to keep us imprisoned. Today we begin this week of freedom, this week of liberation, this week of deliverance from fear and from bondage. Let it also be a deliverance from the fear that makes us, that fills us with hatred <coughs> and with malice and with judgment and with condemnation. Today we can stand and wave our palm branches Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, to the Son of David. And these same voices, in a few days, will shout, Crucify him! <coughs> crucify him! Today our Lord Jesus Christ will enter into our hearts. And shall we, in some days later, decide that Christ in our hearts is a burden that it calls upon us to do things that we consider not exactly natural in human conduct. Forgiving even those who hate us. Turning to smile and greet those who despise us. Realizing that if we truly follow Jesus Christ, we have no enemies. Although other people might consider us an enemy, we do not have enemies. We have only people to be reconciled with. Only people to seek, to embrace, and to call brother or sister. This okay. yeah. Well, I didn't uh, get the rest of chapter 4 posted, though I did post chapter 5 just last night. Anyway, uh, this, this study part, because... Uh, First of all, I was in the hospital, I didn't do much writing, so. <laughs> but anyway, one thing we're trying to look at, the reason why Christ does or doesn't do something sometimes, and there, 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 there has to be reasons behind certain actions. And remember we talked about in uh, Nazareth, they wanted to see Christ work a miracle just because they were curious. And well, he wasn't going to do that. That would be just theatrical. There wouldn't be any meaning to it. So they get irritated with him because he won't do it. So they take him out to the brow of the hill. It's uh, not much of a hill, but there's a little hill out there. And uh, they're going to throw him off down the hill. And in, in, uh, afterwards, Christ works a number of miracles in Capernaum, around the Sea of Galilee. And